So I have the pleasure of sitting beside a group of local and state broadband leaders who are all working to bridge the digital divide. And today we're going to be talking about infrastructure and the role that it plays in furthering our economic health as a region and also how we bridge that inequity that exists in our communities. So my name is Alexia Garcia. I am the farm worker housing and broadband policy manager for Monterey Bay Economic Partnership. I'm joined to my right by Tracy Ryan, legislative advocate for rural county representatives of California. James Hackett, COO of Cruz IO Internet. They're based out of Santa Cruz. Uh, David Witkowski, founder and CEO of Oku Solutions. And I said that correctly. Um, and last but certainly not least, Supervisor Chris Lopez, who represents Monterey County District 3 and also serves as chair of the South Salinas Valley Broadband Authority, which we'll hear about more in a second. Um, and I know that, you know, I'll level with you all. Like, if you think about broadband infrastructure, it probably doesn't send shivers down your spine, unless you're James or David. But um, when we think about how important access to internet is, in almost every aspect of our life, especially in a, in a post-COVID world, um, you realize that it's not a luxury, it's a necessity. And when we think about how there are entire communities in our region that lack access to uh, reliable and affordable internet, and in some cases don't have access to internet at all, be it because of uh, their geography or because of unaffordability, it takes collaboration and forward thinking at all levels of government, at all sectors, public and private, to create solutions. So we're gonna be talking about that a little bit more today. Um, and here at MBEP, we also recognize that broadband really is a priority as a region. Our broadband initiative uh, is three-pronged. I think we had one more slide. But in any case, we take an approach that centers infrastructure, access, and awareness. So infrastructure, uh, referring to advocating for projects and policies that advance um, the deployment of new and updated infrastructure. And we'll talk a little bit more about some specific successes that we've seen in the re region. We do data mapping um, and we provide technical assistance to internet service providers and other uh, applicants seeking infrastructure grants. Access referring to uh, you know, creating visibility it does us no good to have infrastructure if folks can't actually afford that infrastructure. So that looks like advocating for subsidies, programs at all levels of government to make internet more affordable and make sure that it's good internet. And lastly, uh, providing input into guidelines. Um, so grant making processes, making sure that they're actually taking into account the needs of our region. Um, and I guess not lastly, but one of my favorite aspects of access is matchmaking. So lately we've been uh, matchmaking affordable, uh, matchmaking between affordable housing developments and uh, local internet service providers. And that's been really fun as someone with a background in housing um, and connecting all of these amazing stakeholders and making sure that they're not siloed, but working uh, with synergy. And um, again, the last aspect being awareness. So partnering with governments, working with existing um, organizations in our community, doing educational events, making the broadband bureaucracy less bureaucratic and more accessible. Um, and lastly, as part of our initiative, we serve as lead of the Central Coast Broadband Consortium, or CCBC, lots of acronyms in internet, um, and we have done so since 2018. CCBC is an ad hoc group made up of local internet service providers, leaders, and other advocates who all seek to advance internet access, deployment, um, and again, adoption. So like our initiative, it's three-pronged approach, making sure that we have infrastructure, that it's available regardless of geography, and that you can actually afford it. So that's MBEP in a nutshell. Um, I wanna dive right into our, our amazing panelists, and I think I'll, I'll start with Supervisor Lopez at the far end. Um, Supervisor, could you tell us a little bit more about how you got involved in broadband and the need that you saw in the district that you're serving? Well, to, to speak to that, I have to talk about my very first day on the job with the County of Monterey. 14 years ago, we had a meeting here at CSUMB. Steve Blum led that meeting and was talking about the lack of access for communities that look like mine in Southern Monterey County. 
fresh off, fresh out of school, stepping into that meeting, I thought, yeah, this should be easy enough. Here we are 14 years later with a need still growing. My communities need that access. And I think about communities like Camphora, Alpine Camp, Camp 21, Bradley, maybe some you've never heard of, right? These are labor camps. These are hard to reach populations out in the stretches of Monterey County's vast agricultural farmlands who deserve access. And I'm not gonna steal thunder, but one of those has been solved. The reality in South County is that access hasn't been there. And in my opinion, looking at the role that I play as a supervisor, there is two great challenges that will determine the outcomes for kids from my community at, at the end of their growth, whether that be college or going off into professional life, I want them to be competitive. There's two things. One is investing in early childhood, zero to five, to make sure that they're hitting the ground running when they hit school, right? Go measure Q. Number two is access to the internet. If you're falling behind at that basic level, you will not keep up with your peers. And so for me, how I got involved, I have so many wonderful connections from that first day on the job and meeting someone like Steve Blum and what eventually became MBEP and the wonderful partners that we've put together to pushing Monterey County to become a member of RCRC. And I'm not gonna steal Tracy's thunder down there, but that organization's doing incredible things. And I've been given a leadership post there to help lead on that front. At the end, it's about synergy. And I know we already gave him an award earlier, but part of that synergy is Renee Mendez, who stood up here earlier and accepted an award. I see him there in the middle of the room, who helped say, you know, we can, we can do hard things, yeah, but we can do this. This isn't that hard. Let's make it happen. And so it takes tough conversations. It takes focus. And the people you see up here aren't just talkers, they're doers. They're the people making it happen. So that's how I got involved and why I do what I do. My communities continue to lack access. And I wanna make sure that every child who comes up in my community comes out ahead. I don't wanna be the story of catching up when I got to college. I wanna be the story of, wow, they walked in and were ready to go and now they're leading. And I think that's the opportunity that we all see now. It's a question, are we gonna roll up our sleeves and get it done? Or are we gonna say, well, the opportunity was there, but it wasn't the priority. It's a priority, I think, for everybody in this room and definitely everybody up here on the stage. Thank you. Yeah. And I think we all kind of hinted at it, but could you tell us a little bit more about the Five Cities Project, which is now known as South Salinas Valley Broadband Authority, and maybe what the role of like, collaboration played in, in actually getting that accomplished? So I believe I've got a, at least one mayor in the room. Is Mayor Anna Velasquez with us? There you go, in the back. We're often the smallest, the smallest cities in the room and maybe the smallest voice sometimes it feels like at the table, but in South County, we've learned that to move the needle, you gotta work together. And so looking amongst our different cities at the need, there was no question from the beginning that we could pull in the same direction. And so we sat down and kind of had some informal conversations that led to this idea that, you know, there's gonna be a lot of money flowing down and we don't need to be five different people wondering how to get our straw into that milkshake to, you know, there, there will be blood if anybody remembers that movie. We wanted to make sure that we could put the biggest straw on the ground and we had to do that together. And I'm proud to say that all four cities in South County signed on to the JPA as well as Monterey County and working together we've already been able to accomplish some wonderful things, including applying for funds at levels that we could not have anticipated doing alone as a single entity. Now, even with our cities, it wasn't enough. We had a wonderful partner step up at MBEP who said, we can help too. They're helping to staff and make sure that everything that we do is multi-pronged. We're, we're looking across the board and making sure that the conversations about what's possible aren't limited by just the thoughts and experiences that we have in the Salinas Valley. They're helping to open new doors for us. And in that, what we're going to do 
is be, well, I don't want to steal Tracy's thunder. We're, we're going to be doing some very innovative things to help bring access to communities who don't have it now. Thank you. And I think, I think it's okay to share that the, the infrastructure network that we're going to be deploying in South County is going to be one of three pilot projects in the state. So I think that's like exciting. And also will be one of, I think, I can count on my hand, right? Open access municipal broadband. So changing the model and making sure that it's not just um, a few people who can afford not only to own the infrastructure and build it, but also access it at the community level. So thanks again, Supervisor Lopez. It's been really fun working with you and I'm so excited about the future of South County. Um, so keeping it local, we'll, we'll turn to James. Um, tell us a little bit about what Cruise has been up to in the digital equity space. Uh, happy to, yeah. Thanks, Alexia. We, well, as a ISP, Cruzo has been aware of issues of digital equity for many, many years. Um, it's really the pandemic that shone a light on it for a lot of people. And at the beginning of the pandemic, that's when Cruzo came together with some partners, um, the Santa Cruz County Office of Education, the Santa Cruz Community Foundation. We came together and formed Equal Access. Um, to bridge that digital divide, build internet infrastructure and provide affordable internet to folks uh, in our communities who couldn't afford it. Since then, we've connected well over a thousand students and families to free or very low cost internet and built infrastructure capable of serving thousands more. Um, through working with MBEP, more recently, we've expanded those efforts into Monterey County. Equal Access Monterey Bay has been formed, and we've launched several great projects. The one we're really proud of and like to talk about, the one we've talked about um, the most, is the most recent success we've had, and Supervisor Lopez was referring to at the San Gerardo uh, Workforce Cooperative just outside of Salinas. We were able to get a CPUC grant and also work with local and federal funding agencies to connect all 250 residents at that camp. Totally free internet, um, gigabit speeds, and um, thanks to MBEP for introducing us to that fantastic community. It's been a real honor working with those folks, and uh, thanks to everyone in the room who supported that. Next, we wanna just keep doing more. Partnerships like that really showed what a local technologists combined with local community partners and elected leaders and professionals in government who are motivated and passionate can really we can really do stuff with that government money we can really get stuff done and we can get it done quickly so there's a lot more money coming down the pipe over the next couple of years federal and state the state uh, SB 156 is, is building middle mile infrastructure, state, um, state funded middle mile. Middle mile is the highway system of the internet. You need the middle mile before you can connect the last mile and the homes and families. Um, Cruzeo has put together another grant. We've proposed a grant to the NTIA to build more middle mile infrastructure that's going to complement the state's efforts. You know. Middle miles, the highway system of the internet, and we've got a lot of rural areas that are a long way from those highway systems, so we need more middle mile spending that will enable those last mile projects and connect more and more people in our communities. And how can people get involved? Thank you for asking, Alexia. Yep, we're still trying to raise money. We're still trying to get people engaged. Um, anyone can reach out to me at Cruzeo anytime, ojames at cruzeo.com, shoot me an email. But we're actually still trying to raise more funds for San Gerardo to make sure they can be connected for as long as possible. Anyone who feels like getting involved or making a donation to that, just go to equalaccesssantacruz.com. All the information about the projects we're doing through Equal Access is there, and you can make a donation at the Community Foundation. Thanks, James. So shifting, yeah, you know what, yeah. Sorry, James. Cruzai is doing really amazing work just across our region. But shifting from that local perspective, um, I'm gonna turn it over to Tracy, who is working at the state level and working to bring those dollars down to our local communities. 
Um, Tracy, what's going on at the state level and what, what can people at the local level, be it advocates, municipal staff, or internet service providers do to you know, be, at, be aware and, and best positioned to you know, make, make the best of it? Yeah, uh, as uh, James said, there is a lot going on in the broadband space. Um, a lot happened last year with the signing of SB 156, which put $6 billion into the broadband space um, for the middle mile um, that uh, James talked about, but also for last mile programs. Um, in particular, the rules um, were really um, amended in a way that um, were advantages us local governments and rural communities, um, historically disadvantaged and marginalized communities, to take this, I, I like to call it opportunities for our communities, right? And now, um, for those areas that have had problems getting ISPs, your traditional big ISPs to come and serve their area, local governments with nonprofits can now um, take advantage of that funding and bring high quality, reliable broadband to their communities. And as Supervisor Lopez talked about, um, you have a very innovative um, seed here in um, the area that we want to, uh, RCRC, with our new JPA, take to a bigger level. Our JPA is called Golden State Connect Authority, and it uses the same model in that the JPA made up of 39 different counties have come together to look at communities where we can um, um, provide access to this high, high uh, reliable internet kick connectivity and do it in a way um, that the internet providers have not been able to do um, historically. What we're using is that JPA to issue bonds and use the bond funding to actually construct um, the internet infrastructure or the uh, broadband infrastructure. That is something new that we haven't seen on a large scale before, and we're really excited to do that. We could not do it without the funding that came through legislation last year, um, primarily the loan loss reserve program that will back back those bonds so that we can have um, rated bonds so that we can use all of that money for construction as opposed to paying high debt service. Um, so also, as you know, these areas mostly are high, high build or high cost build areas. And that's why we haven't seen the ISPs here before. So it's going to take bonding using our authority as a JPA, but also the federal funding um, account program through the CPUC, which is $2 billion of money that's going to urban and rural counties for projects. Um, there is also the local agency technical assistance fund. Some of you may be familiar with this one. Um, um, that money is actually going out already. There have been two months of awards that have been made. And this is to um, help communities get up to speed and plan for this broadband infrastructure money coming into their communities. So there is a lot going on right now on the state level. But I know I'm supposed to get to digital equity, and I'm usually a fast talker, so I'm going to kind of kick it up to speed here. There is a lot of money coming our way in the next couple years, and it is really focused on digital equity, looking at these marginalized communities and barriers for getting those populations served with affordable broadband, not just high quality broadband, but something that is affordable. Um, the state is working with NTIA on um, two really big pots of money. One is BEAD. You might have heard of this one before, broadband equity and access development, thank you. Um, so this was $42.5 billion at the federal level. That's going to funnel down to the states. California is in um, the middle of putting together their plan for that. Um, there will be a big kickoff October 24th by the California Department, Department of Technology and the CPUC um, to kick off their efforts with the digital equity um, planning grant and also the BEAD planning grant. Uh, dig digital equity is about $60 million. After that, um, after they have their kickoff, they're going to start having listening sessions, task force, all kinds of really good government things that they do. Um, so I implore you folks here um, to get involved. They are really asking for community involvement. 
in understanding what are the real barriers on the ground to getting access to these populations, vets, elderly, um, marginalized communities. Um, what are some of the issues and how can we change that? Um, there's a lot of money flowing down to do this and they, I think that they wanna do it right. Um, so please get involved. Um, they are looking for people that wanna be on these task force. We'll know more after the October 24th kickoff, but you can also go on to the California uh, Broadband for All website and go down and, and do subscribe so you at least know what's happening. One last thing um, is that um, NTIA um, has staff on the ground that are looking to come to communities and meet with community members. And so um, we at RCRC are looking to try to facilitate that. And again, try to make this different than it has been um, with government in the past. So please, um, if you, um, my contact information can be shared if you would like to schedule a time for somebody from NTIA to come to your community and have those conversations. I would love to facilitate that. and. Um, I, I think I took up more than my time. Thank you. Um, SCCBC will also be disseminating that information and can also connect you to Tracy and continue all the collaboration. Um, but there really has been a really good show of faith from all of these organizations at the federal and state levels in terms of engaging the community, not just internet service providers and incumbent professionals, but also consumers, community members. So that's really exciting. And keeping in that, um, working up our way up from our perspective on, on this issue, I'm gonna turn it over to David. Um, could you tell us about the work that you've done in our region and then give us a sense of what, what's to come? Thank you, Alexia. Appreciate the opportunity to be here. So uh, we, uh, through uh, Joint Venture Silicon Valley, which is an organization very similar to MBEP, um, I serve as the executive director of Civic Technologies. We have uh, various groups in that organization. Um, I appreciated what you talked about, the doers, right? We, we have a think tank, but we also have what we call the do tank, right? We roll up our sleeves, we, we get involved in projects. Um, by anticipating where things were going over the past few years, certainly, I mean, it's obvious that the pandemic taught us how much connectivity is, is critical to our daily lives. I don't think anyone here would, would argue with that. Um, in the early days of the pandemic, there were a lot of sort of diving catches, if you will, to try to figure out how to create connectivity. Um, hotspots, or, or even in some cases, cell phones were given out to students as to create hotspots, and the Chromebooks from the schools were taken out, handed to people. So connectivity, of course, enabled those students to continue their education during a very difficult time. Um, and I think the government, both at the state and federal level, has seen this and has recognized it and is, and is taking action, and, that, and that's great. Um, NTIA has been executing on this. Um, they're not necessarily an, an agency that's done something of this scale before, so it's been great to see them uh, building that, that capability. I know they've taken on a lot of people like um, Gladys Palapata, Pal I always butcher her last name. I apologize, is Gladys here? I apologize, I always butcher your last name. Um, Gladys from CETF, Susan Walters, um, uh, Samantha Sharpman from Marconi Society, all of them are now at NTIA. And these are people who live and breathe digital inclusion. Um, so so that's, been, that's been great to see. Um, I think there are certain challenges that are occurring at the federal level. I had a meeting recently with um, Evelyn Ramale, who was the outgoing head of NTIA. Um, Davidson took over for her. Um, the FCC had said that they were gonna get their maps out in November. Davidson came back a couple days later and said, yeah, the maps still have to be challenged, so let's not get ahead of ourselves. I asked, uh, he said 2023. Um, I asked Evelyn, was that January 2023, December or something in between, and she laughed. Um, and, and so the, the map challenge process is going to be, is going to be hard. And, and we need that in order to get to bead. So of course the states can still put in their plans and they're, and they're definitely going to be doing that. Um, I don't think that, but in terms of open access to that, to that bead, it's going to be a little while. That doesn't mean that we shouldn't be thinking about how we're gonna approach this as a region. Um, and, and approaching it as a region, I, I think involves um, several things, which is one, all stakeholders need to be at the table because 
at to, to everyone's point, there's a large amount of money here. It's not just going to be one segment of the economy that's going to do this. Um, taking the model that we use at joint venture, it's academia, it's local, it's companies, large and small, it's governments and stakeholders, community stakeholders. They all have to be at the table. Um, and we are going to have to figure out how this is done. I'm, I'm a little nervous, to be honest with you, about how the focus is on fiber. Um, and I think that's a problem for, for a couple reasons, which is one, fiber is expensive. It takes a long time to deploy. There's a lot of environmental issues in deploying fiber. Uh, on the other hand, you look, at, uh, um, North, you look at Northern Europe, which is now taking the perspective of they're not deploying fiber, they're using wireless technologies. Um, I, I come from the wireless side myself. I'm, I'm biased towards that, I suppose, because of my background in education and my, my work experience. But I think the right solution will be the technology that is appropriate for the problem, which means it could be fiber, it could be wireless, it's a combination of both. It's a large region, we're gonna to have to apply every available technology to make it work. But we need all the stakeholders at the table to really solve this problem. We have to come together as a region and, and make that happen. Um, and I think that given the amount of money that's out there, um, you know, this is a generational opportunity. This, this is something that we are, it, I'm, certainly not in my lifetime, I'm never gonna see a spend like this in broadband. So we have an opportunity to get this right. We, and in order to do that, we have to come together. Um, and, I, and I think there will be a lot of questions if we don't get it right. I mean, you're seeing right now the failure, frankly, of the FCC's RDOF fund. Starlink flushed out of RDOF, LTD broadband flushed out. I just heard that Starry is now out of RDOF. Ardoff, apologies to anybody who worked on Ardoff, Ardoff appears to be turning into an abject failure. Um, and and that's, a, right, that's a problem. Um, the, as we start to see the impacts to pocketbooks, as inflation continues to rise, we just got bad numbers yesterday, people are gonna start asking questions about where money is being spent. We have an opportunity to do this right, and we have to do it right, or there's gonna be, unfortunately, I think there's gonna be repercussions in the future. So my encouragement would be to say, let's, let's get everyone in the room together and let's keep talking about how we're gonna make this happen. Thanks, David. And there's hope, there's like still really good, there's an opportunity, I think is, is the takeaway here. Um, we have a, like two minutes left. So if each of you could give us like a 30 second call to action, like what do you want these folks to take home today? That would be great. I'll start with you, Supervisor Lopez. There it goes. I'd say it's time to engage. Don't think that because the money's there and somebody's working on it, you can walk away. Whatever your agency is, whatever the need is, engage. Make sure to remain part of the conversation. The thing I'm most excited about is we have the right legislative team in place in Sacramento for our region, being Assemblymember Rivas, Senator Caballero, Senator Laird, as well as Assemblymember Mark Stone, who's terming out. But they have supported these efforts and put us in a position to win, so engage. It's our turn to do our part. As David said, there's no silver bullet, but for our region, there are solutions. Step up and be part of them. Do you wanna go ahead, David? We'll just go down the line. Yeah. I was waiting for the green light. Um, I, I've, I think I've already made my call to action. I, I, think, I think there's opportunity, and uh, we have to come together as a region. We need to be having a lot more conversations Simply put, let's let's get together and talk about how we're going to make this happen. Yeah, like a broken record up here, but echoing everything everyone's already said, the can't stress enough really that the literally is a once in a lifetime level of funding coming down to finally address these issues of digital equity, and the regions that are going to take the most advantage of that are the regions that are ready and organized and have plans in place to do that. We've got incredible elected officials in our region. We've got incredible staff and professionals working on these issues. We've got groups and teams like MBEP that can be the central point of all of these activities. But the next couple of years are gonna be critical. It really is a once in a lifetime opportunity to solve some of these issues and um, we, now's the time to come together and fix them. 
I'll say uh, ditto, but I just one specific plug going to what David said, and I think it is so important. Um, we need to hear from the ground up what is where um, where there is service and where there isn't. I think access is a big deal because that is where the mo how the money is going to flow. So if you are shown as served, like I am in my area, and I have one one on a really good day, um, that's a problem because I'll never see coverage because I'm shown as served. So I think um, there is a, a um, an opening for us to go from the ground up and really um, inform the decisions and how this money is spent. And this is the time, ditto to everybody, to engage. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. All right, let's give it up for our panelists. I believe that's time, but I will also just plug our CCBC map, get involved, look at your address on our Central Coast Broadband Consortia website. If you feel like you're not being served, that's the place to, to see whether or not that's being reflected and whether or not your decision makers are actually taking that into account. So there's a room for everyone at the table. I will get off stage now. Thank you all once again.